Alright guys, so welcome back to Gamer Today. Today I've got something special in a bag here, if you guys can see. It's a Target bag, or Target, or Target, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's Target, I guess. Um, anyway, as you guys can see here, I'm going to increase my video quality today with an A6000 Sony camera. Now take a look at this bad boy, because this is a great mirrorless camera. Pretty affordable mirrors camera. This one cost me about five hundred dollars, which is definitely within the price point of reason. Still expensive. Definitely not like, hey, go everyone go get one. It's a little expensive still. So, but what's really cool about this camera is got an APS-C sensor, which is basically you know crop sensor, if you will. A lot of DSLRs have these crop sensors. It's not a full frame camera by any means, but it's going to give you some great quality, and a lot of people really like these. This is going to be really good for video quality, great for photos, and you get some really fast shots with this. You can get some really you know extremely fast shots. I can shoot 11 frames per second with this camera, which means I can go boom, 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 continuous frames per second. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Anyways, besides that, it's 24.3 megapixels, which is really good. I mean, honestly, that's really up to par with a lot of the nice DSLRs out there, some of the Nikons and Canon products out there on the market that are some of the top end. And it's got a great fast hybrid autofocus system using the contrast levels and the focus points to give you really superior freaking autofocus. It's awesome, you know? The only thing that's actually beating this is Sony beating itself with its higher end products. This is kind of the mid-range product from Sony. The other cool thing that a lot of people don't mention when they review this is it's got an OLED screen, which means basically an OLED true finder, meaning the screen, the LCD. So with this package deal here, you get a kit basically, right? You get the lens, you get the body, pretty straightforward. You get a kit lens, and the kit lens, I thought I'd tell you about it, is a 16 to 50 millimeter lens, which is pretty standard, of course. Pretty cool, you know, give you a nice field of range for sure. It's got an F aperture of 3.5 to 5.6, and it says OSS. Now that's optical steady shot. Basically, that's the optical stabilization that Sony has branded. So pretty cool. It's going to give you some very nice steady shots. And definitely, for Sony, has been some of the most stable video I have used over the years. My little history with Sony video cameras or photo cameras and all that is I used to have an old you know, VHS camera back in the day from Sony, which was really good. And of course, I actually got a DSLR hybrid back in the day called the A35, which was really great for video and great for photos. You know, it was an absolute steal of a camera at 60 megapixels back in the day. I got it for like 250 with the whole kit and all the bundle. It was a really great deal and now this has really blown me away with $500 for me this is really a great deal now one thing I should mention it also has Wi-Fi now that's really cool for some of you guys out there who want to use this with your smartphone and maybe get some of your pictures and stuff off that as well directly from the camera or maybe some extra functionality I don't know anything about it I don't plan to use it so I'm probably not going to speak about that too much but it is there and it's pretty cool it acts like a mobile like Wi-Fi spot pretty much is what I understand so you can hook it to your phone so basically you use this as the Wi-Fi spot which is pretty cool and if I didn't mention already it shoots 1080p video not 4k but very crisp 1080p format video and one more thing probably to mention is it uses an e-mount system which means you can't use your Nikon lenses or your Canon lenses or some of your old lenses from your DSLR so you might want to keep that in mind if you're looking to upgrade to the Sony it might mean getting all new lenses now they do have a telephoto lens which is about I think two three hundred dollars regardless uh, where you get it from and you can probably buy it used for a little bit cheaper that also gives you a little bit of a telephoto style lens but this will do you pretty good overall with the kit lens for a while especially if you're doing it for video now I've used this in the store of course but this is some pretty cool stuff now you can see it comes with all these manuals and books and if you guys are curious about those lenses by the way they have a little booklet in there that will tell you about all the extra accessories you can get for this of course they would right Sony come on anyway so cool you get your instruction manual in different languages all that good stuff Let's put that to the side for now though. Let's get to the meaty goodness. And it doesn't take very long to see that the camera is really visible and very easy to get to. So very cool, but before we do that, I will mention this camera can charge off a USB like your phone can. A very basic USB, that's it. Plug this into the camera. You can charge it directly through the camera if you want. And it's about a 10, 20 mile battery. But moving forward with what's in the box and all the goodness, right? You also get this for the viewfinder here as well, another bigger piecing right there. But last but not least for the accessories, you do get a strap, and the strap does say Sony, of course. Why wouldn't it, Sony? Anyway, it's a pretty nice strap. Not amazing, but it does have these little, like, pretend fox leather right there, or whatever you want to call it, fake leather piecing or material there. Pretty cool, I like it. As for the camera itself, though, the piece of resistance, right? So this is the Sony A6000. It's a very, very nice looking camera. It's a mirrorless camera, guys, in case you haven't figured that out already. What makes it mirrorless? Well, I'll tell you what, let's pop open this basically bad boy and see what's got in it. So if one thing you do want to uh, focus on, there's a little button over here, right, for the lens here. Push that in before trying to take the lens off, okay? 
and I want you to go counterclockwise to take off and you guys can see the lens itself right there pretty good all the optics and over here you guys can see the sensor this is a mirrorless camera meaning there's no moving you know mirrors basically there's no mirror moving the light to the sensor in the sense of what you normally get another thing if you want to put this back on guys go to the little dot here there's a white dot there's also a white matching dot on your lens just like in a DSLR never touch the lens guys ever none under any circumstances anyway try to match it up as best you can like so hang on and then I want you to go clockwise once you get it kind of steady like so once you get it like this so I've gotten it in there it's pretty sturdy like so and I want to twist to the right to hear a click and you guys can see I should be able to have no problem at all from that point on again we move around from the back here we can see that uh, LCD well not LCD but it's an OMELED display I should say the display right there pretty cool it's the viewfinder true finder whatever you want to call it and it articulates but this is as much as it articulates if you guys can take a look here and go down and all the way up and then when you're done with that you can push it back in like so now some of you guys might wonder well, why doesn't it flip around which I can totally agree with you guys why doesn't it well this is kind of great though if you're behind it if you're shooting from above or below this could be a great way to get you guys some sort of extra viewing angle you know what I'm saying so it's not totally unfair because it's an OLED display my only best guess is they didn't want direct light hitting it especially if you're shooting outdoors that's my guess Anyways, the electronic viewfinder up there is insanely good. Have to admit, I was very impressed. I'm not one of those guys who uses a viewfinder very often because I'm more into video. I know, God, that's horrible, right? And of course, there's a biopsy little knob here. And if you go to the left all the way, it gets sharper for me. And go this way, it gets a little bit more like dull and all that. But it really works well and it's very crisp, very sharp. It lets you get right out of like, you know, if you're outdoors especially, it lets you see what's going on in that camera only. You know, you don't have to focus on the outdoor lighting and all that. You just see what's going on with your picture, what is going on. And you can review your images in the electronic viewfinder, which is really cool. So it like secludes your eyes. It's like VR, but on the go, kind of, not really. But anyway, it works. Then you've got your mode dial at the top as well. You guys can take a look at that. Uh, right here with the switch here with this little rotating knobby thing just like this dial here you also have your aperture and this is pretty cool you don't really need to switch it very often once you've gotten your shot pretty ready it should be good especially for video but it's very cool and then of course you can knock open your flash there's a little back button there and you get this little flashing unit right there very cool very awesome but anyways enough with that we go around the back here you can see all the different little buttons and knobs it's not too complicated if you've used a point and shoot before or DSLR or both you have a really good idea what some of these things do you got your display your ISO and some of your basic features including your review button right down there which looks like a little play button pretty straightforward I think uh, anyway so very cool and you can also zoom in and zoom out on your pictures right there with the little plus and minus there or you know zoom in zoom out focus button now one of the cool things is the video button is actually on the side over here very kind of hidden it's cool because it's discreet if you guys can even see it and I like that quite a bit about that. And then, of course, if you have a flash, a separate or external flash, you can just mount that up on top and you don't even have to use the built in flash. So kind of cool with that. Now, on the side, something a lot of people do complain about, though, guys, I will mention are these little tassel things. This is for your strap in case you didn't really already figure that out for your strap. But one of the things is you hear how noisy they are. It's a little rattly. I don't think it's that bad, to be honest with you, but some people are going to complain about anything. So I say, you know, some people rip these off, break these off, they twist them down. It's going to ruin your resale value, so I don't think that's worth doing, but perhaps it's something to you. Anyways, going around to the side here, you guys can see, you can flip open this here. you got your external display port, uh, your micro, uh, what is it, micro uh, HDMI, I believe it is, or perhaps it's a mini HDMI. Looks like a micro HDMI to me. You guys uh, can tell me in the comment section below. Uh, beside the point of that, you can charge it from this uh, port right here. And this is like a USB port, pretty straightforward USB port. Again, flip that shut. You've got no uh, external audio that you can do with this. So that kind of sucks. But if you have an external uh, audio device, you can record audio and sync it to the video that you get with this device here, which is what I plan to do in the future with this uh, particular camera, which is what I've been doing recently uh, with most of my videos anyway. So it's kind of something you can do. Anyway, it's not too hard. I'll do a video separately about that in case you guys need a tutorial. Uh, just let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, first things first, take off your lens uh, protector like so. So you see how I've done that, right? I've gone from the center here, just push in and take off. Pretty straightforward. Now, I noticed that this lens had a little hazing on it from the beginning. So that's a little irritating. 
One thing I will recommend that I've been using recently is this pen here. It's called the Les Pen right here. I guess it's called the Lens Pen, not the Les Pen. But anyway, you guys can do what you want with it. But anyways, it's got two little sides to it. Basically, the idea is if you see it's got like this little thing here. Uh, now what you have to do is it's like a little switch on the side here. With one hand, this is tricky. But push it forward. There's a brush, okay? And that's pretty cool for getting some of the extra particles and dust off your lens. Uh, anyways, what's cool about this kind of thing is it protects and like kind of cleans your lens and keeps everything fresh. Now the other side is the important side. You don't want to touch either the brush or the uh, side with your hand because that will kind of defeat the point. But you screw this off like so and then you get this little lens cleaning part here. And we're just going to wipe that lens clean so there's no debris. And we're going to look at it as we clean it like so. It's an oil-free cleaner, so it should do the job pretty well. I can see the hazing is definitely going away. I like that. Uh, but anyway, that is something to be mentioned. There was a little bit of haze on this particular lens. I don't know how much it would affect the actual lens capability, but it is something to be noted. You should always clean your lens. Uh, factory malfunction right there a little bit, right? So as we've gotten all that we can off with that, now we want to go and take that lens... Uh, part with the brush here, push that off like so, get the little brush out, and just get whatever else is off there like so. Pretty straightforward, right? We all know how to clean, I think. At least I hope you guys do. Come on, kids. Anyway, so before we do anything else, one thing we want to tell you guys about is on the bottom here, uh, is we want to open this up because that's where your battery and that's where everything else is going to go, including your SD card. First things first, you don't have to put your SD card in first, but we're going to put ours in there. This is just a generic card, so it'll work, trust me. A lot of people keep trying to upsell these fast cards. It doesn't give you that big of an advantage, and trust me, it'll work with a pretty generic card. This card was bought at Walgreens, and it was you know, a very affordable. So, like I said, it's just going to give you a small nudge in speed, uh, You know, not really so much performance, just a little bit of speed performance. I mean, not really... A huge advantage if you get a very expensive card. Okay, so now get your battery in, right? So this went down right away. Now, if it didn't go down right away and didn't go all the way in, basically it means you've got it backwards. So if you see what happens when it goes backwards, so it won't go down, it'll keep bouncing around like this. Obviously, it's wrong. So flip it around and you should be done. Push it down like that to your snap. Once you've done that, just literally slip that down like that and you are done and ready to go. Now to turn on the camera, just at the very top, there's an on and off switch. Switch it on. Obviously, my lens cap's already off. And I am shooting. Now, you guys can see what I'm seeing right there. And it's pretty, very amazing, if you will imagine. Uh, now, see if you guys can see in that lens finder. I'm kind of curious. Can you see what's in there? Should turn on right there. Very, very cool. So if you guys can see through that viewfinder, that's what it kind of looks like. Pretty cool. I know it's not going to be very easy to see in the camera. But this will give you guys an idea. So pretty cool. That's what you get to see. And of course, you can turn on certain features and turn off certain features of the display. I haven't turned on any of the real extra features. This is pretty much standard out. Now, continuous shot is a feature that you need to turn on in the menus. And what that does, again, like I said, you can see the articulating screen, is we go here to shoot. This is our shooter up here. It's also our focusing and all that, just like any other lens. And you can see, I'm shooting you all, shooting you all. See? And that's a big you know, thing. It's 11 frames per second is fast enough for anybody. Three to five frames per second is pretty fast. Now, I won't say you'll get the sharpest shot every freaking frame, because that's not true. But out of maybe 11 frames, if you shot all 11 frames, you'll probably get three to four frames that are pretty you know, sharp, depending on your lighting, depending on how fast your subject's moving. If it's not moving at all, you might get maybe eight or nine of those 11 shots to be very sharp. So it just depends on you guys, which is interesting. Now, I also want to mention on the side here, uh, you do have a powered zoom and a manual zoom. The powered zoom has a rotor motor, if you guys can hear that and watch it do its thing. So it's zooming in and zooming out by just pushing this little lever. Now, if I want to do that manually, I just literally do this. And you always want to go from the lowest point you can, like so, and back, like so. For a smooth focus and back and forth, right? Be very delicate. Now, the next thing I want to keep in mind is you can actually use this as your focus ring. It doubles as your focus ring, which is kind of irritating at the same time. Cool. Now, I say that because I have to turn that mode on. If I want manual focus, I need to turn it on manual focus. And then this zooming feature becomes a manual focus as well. 
uh, with like a digital focus lens. And you guys have to play with that yourself. And trust me, it's worth playing with because you can get some really stunning shots and really cool shots with this camera. Now, one other thing I will mention before we go to FaceTime uh, is basically I love the fact that this like grip right here is really, I mean, it's absolutely amazing how this DSLR, this like, you know, Milius camera has like a DSLR feel while looking like a point and shoot. Uh, from a distance but when you have it in your hand and you're the one using it it feels very different trust me now i will try this flash out because i haven't tried it yet myself here we go there we go there's the flash gotta love the flash look at that obviously that's going to slow down your speed of shot quite a bit because the flash requires you know obviously more uh you know requires more energy to get that shot out there now, if you're using an external flash, that might speed this process up a bit, but every time you shoot with the flash, it's going to take a second. And another thing to keep in mind is when you save video to this card, certain times, like if I'm taking tons and tons of photos, I might need to wait for this to actually save to the SD card. In my case, it hasn't happened yet, but it is a common problem with these kind of cameras that it may take a little time you know, to save to the SD card. But as for manual and automatic modes, automatic mode right out of the box is going to get you shooting some great modes. There's two modes to focus on if you're new. There's this superior um, photo mode and then there's the green mode, which is just auto. Uh, both of them are pretty cool. The superior gives you even more, like it takes away all the controls and does all the great work for you. And it does a pretty good job, honestly. I've seen some pretty good results so far. And so does the actual, you know, normal uh, mode do as well the uh, normal uh, automatic mode as for manual modes there's so much depth you can get into with this if you like dslrs and you're into all that kind of thing this is a great way to go too but if you're looking to just shoot some great video out of the box treat this like a vlogging camera this is still a great option for you i should mention as well there's also a auto focus manual focus mode here now if you get it into manual focus you can use the same exact sensor to get the same shot and it'll basically It'll try to do a bouquet effect because it'll put basically you zoom in on this object and you'll get like a well, that's pointless. And again, guys, don't forget if you want to use like you know like to get a bouquet effect or if you want to get something with a manual focus going on, just make sure to put it into manual mode and this zoom lens will become a manual focus lens. So make sure to be happy with where you've got your lens at before you do that. And you can switch back and forth with ease with this extra function button at the top. So pretty nice, pretty neat, pretty neat, uh, nifty right there. So we're going to turn this video over and we're going to try using this Sony camera on the tripod behind us here to give you an idea of like basically how this video is going to look with the lighting we currently have. All right, guys, so welcome back to Gaming Today again. You are seeing me on the Sony A6000 camera, basically mirrorless camera, I should mention, in superior video mode with all the basic settings. Nothing is done uh, manual right now. And you're hearing the audio based on basically in the camera itself. You're not hearing any of my external microphones. There is no plug on anything in this room right now uh, in terms of audio. All my fancy microphones are still basically what they are, not plugged in. Anyways, the phone you were watching us off of was the LG V20 and that's a great you know camera basically that is a really nice camera built in one of the best cameras you can get on a smartphone today uh, only camera better than that is an LG V30 camera so point is we had a very good camera to show you in the first place now we're showing you an even better camera and you guys can be the judge what you think based on the automatic settings of both you know my phone and the camera normally we use manual settings this time we used automatic uh, settings on the phone to give you guys an idea but anyways you guys can see the colors you guys can see the idea it's pretty cool my shirt is very colorful so i thought you guys might want to see that so i'm going to give you guys a good shot of my shirt there you go take a look okay Anyways, yeah, guys, so this is the camera. If you guys want something to upgrade your quality of your channel or your video quality, this might not be such a bad option. It's not the absolute best option for everybody, but for some people, this could be a great way to go. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. This is what we're going to be rocking for with the channel. Hopefully it looks better, and hopefully you guys enjoy what you guys are seeing currently. Anyways, guys, till next time, this has been Gamer Today.